Before we get started, I wanted to recall a couple trig identities. So these are the sum of angles for sine and cosine. We'll need them today. And the way I remember them is they use all combinations of sine and cosine for both of them. There's a sine of A, cosine of A, sine of B, cosine of B. But they both start with the first one, the first angle. Cosine of A is this first one. The next thing you need to remember is cosine doesn't mix up sines and cosines, so this one's going to be cosine of B. Well, sine does, so if it's sine of A, it mixes up the sines and cosine. And the next thing you need to remember is sine is the same sine. That's my mnemonic device. This is plus, then this is plus, which means cosine's not. That's minus. If this is plus, that's minus, because sine's the same sine. Then you should be able to figure out the rest of the identity with the sines and cosines of the angles we haven't used. So it'll be sine of B, cosine of A. And of course, this could be in any order. I just thought I'd do the sine first. You should have these memorized because if you need the double angle, you can get the double angle from this these formulas. You put A here and then you have A plus A is 2A. And you can create other formulas from this. We're going to start off with finding the derivative of the sine of x. So the only thing that we have to use is the definition, just like we did in the other sections when we were trying to find the power rule. So now you can see why I showed you those identities. This we need to rewrite. There's only one thing to do here, and it's use the identity that I just showed you. Of course, if we're finding the cosine of x, we'll be using this identity. So you need to know those. I can ask either one of these questions on the exam to use the definition to find these derivatives. Same sign. Okay, so we just expanded that. Uh, now what can we do? Just look at it. And there's not much else we can do. I mean, we don't want to just go ahead and distribute H it can't be divided out by any of those because you know those angles cannot come out. So I'm going to look and see if I have any two terms that have like terms. I see a sine of x here and a sine of x here. These don't have anything in common. So I think I'm going to group these two together and then make this a separate limit. Let's do it. Now that I've grouped them, we can factor that out and see what happens. Now we can distribute the limit, because I think both of these limits exist. But also, we can separate the products. Again, we do not put both of them under H. We choose one. So now that we have a product, it looks like each of these exist, so we can distribute that limit to the product. And again, remember this times that is the top, 1 times h is the bottom. Do not distribute that h. There's a couple identities from the last exam that we had. h goes to 0, sine of h over h, 0 over 0. This does go to 1. And this one, as h goes to 0, if you remember that was the other one that we worked out, this goes to zero. The limit of a, as h goes to zero of sine of x, it's pretty much treated like a constant, is sine of x times zero. And again, h goes to zero, there's nowhere to plug h in, so that's cosine of x. This goes to zero. Similarly, we can use the same process, but we'd probably have to use the second identity. And I really suggest you either pause it and do it yourself now, or you do it after this video, or do it for homework. It's good practice. So now that we know those two, we can rewrite all the other four identities in terms of sine and cosine and use the quotient rule. So let's do it. Tangent of x is sine of x over cosine of x. 
Start with the bottom, derivative of the top, minus, flip them, bottom squared. Again, it's very helpful to make sure that these switch inside, outside, outside, inside. Now let's take the derivatives. Again, you're going to need to memorize that. It'll make your life much easier the sooner you get those memorized. The derivative of sine of x is cosine of x. The derivative of cosine of x is the opposite of sine of x. Two negatives is a plus. That's another trig identity. And one over the cosine squared is the secant squared. And similarly, I suggest you practice all six of them at home. Here's the second set. And the last, but not least, this one's a little bit trickier. You get that wicked constant there to use the quotient rule with. Now, remember the derivative of a constant is zero. So that's going to zero out. Okay, so again, we're splitting this up. This cosine of x times cosine of x is cosine squared x. And then we have two trig identities here. This is tangent of x. One over cosine of x is secant x. Okay, let's do a couple examples, and then I'm going to give you a little bit of a method to help you memorize these. Okay, so remember, we want the equation of the line, okay, of the tangent line, to this function at a point. Again, whatever function you have, we're looking at, we want the equation of the tangent line, okay? So a line, where if it's going to be the equation of the tangent line, okay, so don't forget that. That's got to be my m. So our m going to be f prime at pi over 4. So we got to find f prime of x first. So it's the derivative of cosecant, and then we plug in pi over 4. 45 degrees, that's going to be 1. Cosecant of pi over 4 is 1 over sine of pi over 4. It's the square root of 2. 1 over square root of 2 over square root of 2, or 1 over 1 over square root of 2, because square root of 2 over square root of 2 is that. I like that. Plug that in there, and my x naught is pi over 4. My f of x naught is my y naught for my formula. Those are the same, top and bottom. Okay, we have it. So y minus y naught, m is minus square root of 2, x minus pi over 4. So x naught. You can keep it that way or solve for y. Either or. But you don't need to go further. Our last example is from the book. It's number 32 from the book. Okay, so I think this problem is really good to do and really good to understand because it helps with learning and understanding the notation. If you understand the notation, life in this class is so much easier. So I actually always like to start with what I'm looking for. So it says, here's the question, at what rate is the distance s between the airplane and the fixed point p changing with respect to theta? Let's write that. At what rate, that's what we're looking for, find, find the rate of s changing, so I guess, at di distance between s with respect to theta. That's kind of the key things. Okay, so let's translate that. The rate of s with respect to theta. Okay, so we can see rate of distance and the bottom is with respect to theta. We're going to need the, unit, the units of those, too. I'll get into that later. 
And then it asked more. It's saying at or when theta is equal to 30 degrees. So let me add those wor that wording, when theta equals 30 degrees. Okay, so we're looking for the rate at a certain point. The other notation, this is alternative notation that I prefer actually. Find, so this is what we're looking for. D, S, D, theta, given or when theta equals 30. Okay, I really prefer that notation. And I'll be using that notation when we get into related rates. Again, if you understand the notation, life is so much simpler. Okay, so we've got that and we've got a picture here going on and we've got a triangle and we're given the height is 3,800. Here's my distance S that we're looking for and there's theta. So let's just clean it up. Let's just draw that plain triangle without any hoopla. That's feet. This is S and it looks like we can see since we want dd theta, we need dd theta of s. So we need to solve for s. Cross multiply, divide. So I can avoid the quotient rule, we might as well convert it. Okay, so as I mentioned, I want dsd theta, so if I have s, which I do, I can take dd theta of both sides. We've done this before in previous lectures. So take dd theta of the left side, dd theta of the right side. Again, it's because I want dd theta of s. And there I have it on the left, dd theta of s is dsd theta. If you want to pull out that constant, and we just picked a problem with the same derivative. you got to know all six of them. Oops, it's minus. Make sure you put a parenthesis there and it doesn't make it look like it's subtraction. So I found the derivative. Now I want to find the derivative evaluated at theta equals 30, when theta is equal to 30. We just add that notation right here, at theta equals 30, at theta equals 30. It's 1 divided by 1 half, which is 2. Square root of 3 halves all over 1 half. So 2's cancel. Okay, so what are the units? The units are the units of this rate, okay? So just because you plug in degrees, you can plug in cosine of 30 degrees, you get square root of 3 over 2. You could plug in cosine of pi over 6. You'll still get square root of 3 over 2. That doesn't change the output. That The output's a real number. But when you're looking for this rate, it's the rate of the units on top. ds is the units of s, which is feet, if you remember. See, right here, feet. It's in feet. Divided by what's the units of theta. Well, it's always, whenever you're using calculus, it's always radians. The output is always radians when we're using calculus. It's a real number, okay? That's why we learned about radians. Okay, so it looks like a fine and dandy answer. Maybe pull out your calculator, maybe use it, but, but this is a tricky problem. Express the answer in units of feet per degree. That's not what we have. So let's convert it. So let's just keep multiplying. This is times, oh yeah, this is evaluated at 30, theta equals 30. So we want to get rid of the rad. Rad goes on top. It's pi radians per 180 degrees, and that'll give me my degrees on the bottom, feet per degrees. You can write the word degree if you like. You don't need to simplify it, just use your calculator. And I get 229.7. I get more, but we can also approximate it. And that's the answer. Again, you're looking for a rate. You gotta have units top and bottom. And the units are that rate. Okay, so now maybe this will help you memorize the six 
derivatives of the trig functions. So before I get started, I want to point something out. I'm going to spell these out. Sine So what I want us to notice here, there's a co, co, co. These are called the co-functions of the trig functions of these three. And again. So each of these three trig functions on the left have a co-function. And again, we're just adding co in front of it. Sine, cosine, sine, cosine, tangent, cotangent. You gotta know the names of them secant cosecant so doesn't mean the derivative is the cofunction we know that's not true okay so don't get that into your head right now but now what if i take the cofunction of sine what's the cofunction of sine it's cosine what's the cofunction of cosine and i throw a negative in front of there so let's write the derivatives of these three there's the one my second one. And by the way, do not be forgetting these angles. I take off that. So the derivative of tangent of x, if you remember, it's secant squared x. I'm gonna leave some room there. The derivative of the last one on the left is secant. And secant was secant of x, tangent of x. And the order doesn't matter. So if you can memorize these three in the pink boxes, their co-functions, all you have to do is take those three equations and apply the co-functions in each spot, okay? Like I said, sine, the co-function is cosine of x. The co-function of cosine of x is sine of x, but each of these will have a negative. So that's pretty interesting. Instead of six that you have to memorize, you really only have to memorize three. So the derivative, the cofunction of tangent is cotangent. And the answer is the opposite of the cofunction of secant x, which is cosecant, secant cosecant. The cofunction of secant of x is cosecant of x. And we throw a negative and it's the opposite of the cofunctions of these two. Secant, cosecant x, tangent, cotangent of x. Okay, so as I mentioned, these are the three that you have to memorize. You have to memorize all six, but you can memorize these three from their cofunction. Has to be the ones that are positive is or the ones without the co in front of it. Sine, tangent, secant. When you're using the co-function, cosine, cotangent, cosecant, they have a negative in it. And again, if you have these three memorized, you got the negative memorized, you just got to find the co-functions. Okay, hopefully that helps. Okay, that's the end of this video. Thanks a lot.